Dubai is the most vulnerable of the economies in the Middle East and North Africa to strict lockdown measures, consultancy firm Capital Economics wrote this week. The pandemic crisis follows a number of years of declining revenues for some of the Emirates' most important sectors, primarily real estate and hospitality. Dubai's government-related entities, one of which triggered the Emirates' debt crisis in 2009, have cumulative debts equal to $88.9 billion, or more than 80% of Dubai's gross domestic product, Capital Economics estimates. Dubai, United Arab Emirates, Dubai, the glittering commercial hub of the Gulf, is facing the risk of a debt crisis reminiscent of the 2009 crash that wiped out thousands of jobs and nearly half the value of the Emirates stock market, economists are warning. Only this time, declining business growth over recent years is being compounded by the double whammy of crushed oil prices and global lockdowns brought on by the pandemic. Dubai is the most vulnerable of the economies in the Middle East and North Africa to the economic damage from such lockdown measures, UK-based consultancy firm Capital Economics wrote in a report this week. We think that Dubai's economy could contract by at least 5 to 6 percent this year if these measures last into the summer. Lockdown measures in the Emirate, which is home to the world's tallest building and largest mall, have seen all but essential businesses close. This will cause Dubai's economy to contract sharply, exacerbating overcapacity in key sectors and making it more difficult for the Emirates' government-related entities GREs, to service their large debts. Dubai's GREs, one of which, investment company Dubai World, triggered the Emirates' 2009 debt crisis when it couldn't meet its repayments, have cumulative debts equal to $88.9 billion, or more than 80% of Dubai's gross domestic product, capital economics estimates. The Dubai government's economy department did not respond for the requests for comment or figures, but official numbers are not readily available. In 2018, the IMF estimated that GRE debt was at $60.3 billion. This is not the first time markets have fretted about a Dubai default, Charles Robertson, global chief economist at Renaissance Capital said. But this time it's serious, given a health crisis, a transport and tourism crisis, an oversupplied real estate market and an oil price plunge. An already sliding market. The pandemic crisis follows a number of years of declining revenues for some of the Emirates' most important sectors, primarily real estate and hospitality. Residential property prices have fallen 30% from their 2014 peak oversupply and weakening demand, and revenue per available hotel room is down more than 25% since 2015. Last year Dubai's economy grew at just 1.94%, its slowest pace since the dark days of its near-economic collapse in 2009. The crisis, more than a decade ago, was sparked by a property crunch that forced Dubai to seek a $20 billion bailout from its wealthier and more conservative neighbor, UAE capital Abu Dhabi. If debt problems do materialize, Dubai's government is not in a position to step in given its own large debt burden, wrote Capital Economics. Dubai's sovereign debt, separate from the GRE debt, amounted to 110% of GDP in 2019, according to the IMF placing it among the highest debt-to-GDP ratios in the world. Therefore, the consultancy wrote, a key factor that will determine how fresh debt problems in Dubai play out is the response from neighboring Abu Dhabi. With the pandemic amplifying the supply-demand imbalance, S&P Global Ratings wrote in a note on Thursday, we now expect to see international demand for property in UAE to be subdued and the fall in residential prices to be steeper than we had expected, and lingering well into 2021. Pressures on the industry had already raised some worries over ripple effects on the banking sector. Last year Dubai lenders extended loans worth $66 billion to Dubai's property sector, according to the UAE Banks Federation. And a Fitch Ratings report last September warned that banks have not fully recovered from the 2009 crash and smaller banks are more vulnerable to deterioration in credit conditions due to thinner capital buffers and lower revenue generation. Will Abu Dhabi step in? A big question determining the Emirates' financial future is the speed and extent to which Abu Dhabi steps in with support. As an Emirate, Abu Dhabi's revenues are also being hit by the crash in oil prices, but one of its top economic officials told CNBC last month that it remains in a strong position financially. Abu Dhabi has the resources, even at these levels of crude oil prices, to continue with its planned progression of its capital investments for 2020, Muhammad Ali Al-Shorafa, 
chairman of the Abu Dhabi Department of Economic Development, told CNBC in mid-March. Abu Dhabi in March announced a $27 billion emergency stimulus plan to help private sector businesses and banks affected by the pandemic. The assets of the Emirates Sovereign Wealth Funds constitute nearly $950 billion, Capital Economics wrote, which could pay off the Dubai's GRE debts more than 13 times over. Authorities in Abu Dhabi may be hesitant about bailing out Dubai again given moral hazard concerns as well as the constraints of the collapse in oil prices, the firm wrote. On the other hand, policymakers may feel they need to act quickly and aggressively. Failing to support Dubai would also raise concerns about the economic and political stability of the UAE as a whole. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. You are here for your daily dose of the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Please take a second to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you. Sentiment soured further in the United Arab Emirates as a gauge of business conditions in the second-largest Gulf economy slumped to an eight-year low. In an echo of disputes that have roiled global trade, sales to foreign customers posted a weaker upturn, and new orders stagnated in the UAE in August, according to IHS Market. Its purchasing managers index dropped to 51.6 from 55.1 in July declining for a third month and edging close to the threshold of 50 that separates contraction from growth. Fears of a global downturn are deepening as signs of a manufacturing slump have emerged from Europe to Asia. Domestic competitive pressures are compounding the outlook for the UAE, a federation of seven emirates that includes oil-rich Abu Dhabi and tourism and trade hub Dubai. Dubai, beautiful, full of potentials and the land of economic advances. Or was it a long time ago? Dubai's economy has been growing so little in the past decade that many believe it can't be even called growth. Surveys show that the economy has seen a 1.94% growth in 2018 which was Dubai's slowest pace since 2009 when the economy crashed due to a debt crisis. A big part of Dubai's economy is focused on tourism and international business services. These two sectors have been hurt by a rough patch amid a fall in the real estate market. Experts say a weakening external backdrop, a strong US dollar and the ongoing correction in the property market are headwinds for a number of vital sectors. Property prices in Dubai have fallen by more than a quarter from their peak in 2014. It is expected that the prices fall 5 to 10 percent in the near future as a result of a continued gap between supply and demand. What happened in 2009 that still haunts the sheikdom? Collapsing property prices put Dubai in a debt crisis, so to tackle the situation, Dubai asked a $20 billion bailout from oil-rich Abu Dhabi. After that, Dubai's GDP grew at 4.8% in 2013 before starting to decline and the drop accelerated last year after the property sector slumped and the number of tourists stagnated. The UAE needs to attract 20 million tourists each year to make ends meet. But official figures indicate that in the past two years, the number of tourists stood at just under 16 million and in the first half of 2019, Dubai welcomed 8.3 million visitors. Standard & Poor's say the slowdown that started in 2014 is forecasted to carry on through 2022 due to low oil prices, fallout from the US-China trade war and political turmoil. These days Dubai faces high public debt amounting to around $124 billion or 108% of gross domestic product. This debt is divided between the government and state-linked companies. The government has recently announced a series of initiatives to boost growth and S&P says it expects Dubai's economy to pick up to 2.4% this year, largely due to the completion of projects related to the International Trade Exhibition Expo 2020. But at the same time, it says the growth is unlikely to stay high since a trade war between China and the US is killing the economy across the world. Lower regional demand due to the US-imposed sanctions on neighboring Iran is another factor. It will have a negative impact on transit trade which is an important contributor to Dubai's economy. A slowdown in Dubai's economy since 2014 is forecast to carry on through 2022 due to low oil prices, fallout from the US-China trade war and political turmoil, Standard & Poor's said Tuesday. Growth in the Middle East's most diversified economy has also been impacted by a deterioration in the key real estate and tourism sectors, the International Ratings Agency said in a report. Dubai faces high public debt amounting to around $124 billion, or 108% of gross domestic product, 
GDP, divided between the government and state-linked companies, the report said. The Emirates' GDP grew at just 1.94% last year, its lowest since 2010 when the city-state was still recovering from the impact of the global financial crisis and defaulting on its debt. S&P said it expected Dubai's economy to pick up to 2.4% this year, largely due to the completion of projects related to the International Trade Exhibition Expo 2020 opening in October next year. After the expo, growth will then moderate to 2% through 2022, it said. The trade war between the United States and China, and lower regional demand due to sanctions on neighboring Iran, are likely to slow transit trade, an important contributor to the Dubai economy, S&P said. Dubai's GDP grew at 4.8% in 2013 before starting to decline and the drop accelerated last year after the property sector slumped and the number of tourists stagnated. The city-state, one of seven sheikdoms that make up the UAE, had expected to attract 20 million visitors annually by 2020 when it hosts the six-month expo. But in the past two years, the number of tourists stood at just under 16 million and in the first half of 2019, Dubai welcomed 8.3 million visitors, according to official figures. The property market, which contributes some 7% to GDP, has been in a downturn since mid-2014, with sale and rent prices shedding a third of their values. Dubai ruler and UAE Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashd formed a committee to regulate the oversupplied real estate market. During the past year, the Emirate has taken a raft of measures to boost the domestic economy and lure foreign investors by easing residency and business rules, including allowing full ownership of businesses by foreigners outside free trade zones. The Emirate draws 70% of its revenues from fees on a host of transactions, some 24% from taxes and profits of government companies, and just 6% from oil. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.